I remember back when me and I had some kids were going to Calvary Baptist Church, all four of them. And they were there with me. We only got half of them today. So I'm, I'm excited about that. We got some great exciting things. But what are we going to do after this year is over? After this year is over. A lot of us, including myself, will say, I'm glad it's over. <clears throat> but God is still working in the midst of all these trials. Amen. And the thing that's going on. We got some people that I know have loved ones in the hospital almost on their last breath and the loved ones can't go in because it's locked down because of fear. Well, I was proud to say when I asked left this earth to go to be with heaven, there were, she was, hand was held. I don't believe anything can keep a true believer from worshiping God. Come on, come on. And that's coming from my heart. I don't know how many days I have left, but I'm going to continue to do what God called me to do in 1979. And the kids know the body. <clears throat> Did the best I could, and I fell short in many ways. But I was a young Christian. I was a young Christian. And we did the best we could do with the blessings that God blessed us with. But as this year is about over, in fact, this is the last Sunday of this year. There's a lot of people out, a lot of people sick, a lot of members of the family are sick, and they enter into eternity. And Joey knows what I'm talking about so well. <clears throat> but one thing that I want everyone to know, Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, for all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And I believe that. I preach it and I believe it. And I don't need anyone to tell me I've got to do this to receive what God freely gave. And I believe that as well. Maybe that's why we are a non-denominational church. My faith is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And no one else. Amen. And you kids can remember when I fell at Lee Valley when we were building a new church. Fell and hit the slab of the church. And they know that they can testify as well as anybody else. No broken bones, toe up, but no broken bones. And I fell approximately 13 to 16 foot and hit the slab of the church. And I'm still here. Don't tell me what I have to do to be saved. Tell me who I have to go to to be saved. Amen. I can't go to a preacher, a pastor. I can't go to a church that's a certain name of that church. I have to go to the one who was born, the one who was crucified, the one who was buried, the one who rose, and the one who ascended into heaven, and the one that's coming back. Amen. And I believe that. But as this year is about over, I'll say this, today is about over as well. Tomorrow is just about here. And the next day, we don't know, do we? But if we have faith and we believe, we know the one who I'm talking about has time in his hand. He is time. Amen. And when this life is over, I know where I'm going. Not because I'm perfect, not because I follow the teachings of a bunch of people, but I follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on. I have no doubt where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt where I is at right now. Mm -hmm. 
But I want to share this with you this morning. One can't live in the past. One can't stay in the present. But one must plan for tomorrow. And without the plan for, with Jesus Christ, tomorrow is you. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. Amen. But we need Jesus Christ to lead us each step of the way. Amen. Satan wants to entice us to get us to believe in him and what he has to give us. But I'm here to share this with each and every one and even those out there on the airway right now. Satan, you might think you're being blessed by Satan, but you continue Satan's going to lead you down the road of destruction. We need to follow the one who gives life. Amen. And that one is Jesus Christ because that one will never lead you astray. Amen. And this time, let me tell you something. We need Jesus more now than we ever did. Amen. One must always be moving forward with Jesus. Like when we had the four youngsters. I was just about as young as them for what I knew about our Lord and Savior. But God had mercy with me and patience with me. And he allowed me to walk. And each step I took, in spite of myself, I was getting closer to him. And that's what we need to do and say, Lord, this year is about over. But I'm looking forward because I want to walk through that door that you have opened for me. Because God has so much. And we want to talk about something today about the shepherds that was in the field. What was going on in their lives and what's going on in our lives. Amen. I believe if we're careful, we can compare today with that time in history. The world was in a turmoil then and the world is in a turmoil right now. Somebody might say, well, I got the world by the tail. Be careful. That tail might have a head that's getting ready to bite you. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I want to share this too. Jesus didn't stay as a baby. But rather he grew up into a man in order to shed his blood for you and I and for all who will put their faith and trust in him. And this is what I find so fascinating about the God we worship. God left his throne and became a baby in order for that baby to grow, in order for that baby to shed his blood for our salvation and for the forgiveness of sins. We have his mercy, we have his grace, and we have his forgiveness. I don't know what else anybody can want. What else can we want? A, a $25,000 coffin? I don't need a $25,000 coffin. A bed sheet would be good for me. Because this body is going back to what has come. And the spirit is going back to the one who gave it. I know where my spirit is going to be. I know it. But let's talk about the shepherds for just a few moments. In verse 8, let's get, let me get verse 8 up there. And they were in the same country, shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. The shepherds were going about their daily lives, not doing anything wrong, just living out their lives. Keep this in mind, though. They were always looking for the Messiah to come. A lot in the, na in the nation of Israel today are looking for the Messiah to come. The Messiah has already come. But the good part about it for us, the Messiah is coming back again. Amen. Now look. Like I 
Hashem. For those that are here, for those that are out there, the Bible is very clear. For those who call themselves believers, but they do not follow the teachings of Jesus, they are not the disciples of Jesus. To be a disciple, you have to follow the one who teaches. Just like many of us today as the shepherds in that day, we're living our lives day to day. Day to day. There's no difference in my life. I'm living my life day to day. But when I fell back in 93, and Melissa and Rusty was married, I think, let me see, that was August, they was married in October, August, September, three months later, we did a ceremony in the new church. In fact, we got a lot of rain, and <clears throat> Greg hadn't had a chance yet to grow, and plywood was put down because as she'd walk up, she wouldn't, from the old church to the new church, she wouldn't get a, a, a white gown and dirty. So we had plywood so she could walk up it. Isn't that fascinating? Three months later, I'm doing a ceremony. And walking me down that aisle. Uh huh. Tell me God's not real. Tell me God's not powerful. Tell me God's not in control. If things is not going right, Say, Jesus, here I am. Woo! Praise the Lord. But just like many people today, they're always looking, but never expecting. Just living out their daily lives. We're not doing anything wrong. I don't believe we are. Unless you're following what the world has to give you. The world says this, you do this and I'll give you that, but you got to pay a price for it. When Satan gives you something, you got to pay a price for it. So this is what I say. I'll sum it up real quick. Satan, you ain't got nothing I want, baby. Get on out of here. I got a God who's going to supply every need that I have. I don't need you. I don't need anything you, you got because whatever I need, God is going to be given to me. My trust and my faith is in Jesus. Because why? Somebody ought to ask me, why? Why are you so adamant about what you're saying? Because God has never left me alone. God has always been right here with me. And God has always supplied me and I as and the kids when we have raised them, whatever we had. And he took care of us. He took care of them. What makes me think he won't take care of me now? And I pray I have nothing to say with the kids now. Because they're going to have to make up their own mind and follow Jesus. I can't do it for them. But I can tell them what Jesus has done for us in our childhood and up. He has never left me in our nails. Roland can attest to that. We didn't have any insurance, health insurance. Roland needed help. I think he broke your arm or something. Yes, sir. You remember that? God took care of it. He took care of it. So what makes me think he won't take care of whatever I have needs right now? You know, part of me is gone. But part of me is going to follow. Now you don't want to know why I shout a little bit? Woo! Praise the Lord. Amen. Why don't y'all give the Lord a good shout? Woo! Praise God. We're going to work on that. We'll get into a lot of that. But the shepherd's life will get ready to change. The shepherd. I tell you what I believe right now. If the angel of the Lord would come and talk to one of us, we'd be scared half to death. Huh? Yeah. I remember. 
I was working at Tom's Pick Hill and the church was pastors way out in the woods. I was going all night. I never had four kids. And an angel appeared to our neighbors and told her, don't be afraid. Remember that rule? Maybe you do, I don't know. But listen. Don't be afraid. I wasn't there. Somebody had to make a living to put shoes on those kids' feet. Somebody had to. And I believe that's what a husband and a father are supposed to do. Take care of the blessing. Amen. The shepherd after the visit of the angel. Woo! Boy, that must have been a good time, huh? I'm not worthy, Lord. You know what the Lord would say? Son, I know you're not worthy. You're not here because you're worthy. You're here because I love you. You're here because I love you. Nobody is worthy. Nobody is worthy. Only the blood of Jesus. Only the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But can you just picture the excitement of those shepherds? One thing about it, they return doing what they were doing. But their lives were now changed. It would be changed forever. You can't see Jesus without something happening. Because when you, let's take Peter. Jesus said, Peter, you're going to die me three times. Oh no, Lord, not me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Lord. Not me. After the third time Peter denied Jesus, I believe this. The last time Peter looked in the eyes of Jesus, and when he looked in the eyes of Jesus, he would never be the same again. When you have experienced Jesus, you will never be the same again. You never will be. And I'm glad of that. But their lives were changed. People search for riches today. If only I have this, I'll do that. Well, I'll say this. When the shepherd saw baby Jesus, they had all they needed. There was something there for them. And something took place when that Dowling Thomas, remember Dowling Thomas? Looked upon Jesus. He doubted no more. He said, unless I see his hands, a nail scored hands, I will not believe. He would never be the same again. Somebody might say, well, preacher, I'm not there yet. Don't feel bad. I'm not neither. But we're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. And that's very important. We're working on it. And this is what I'll say. After this, this year is getting ready to be over very shortly. Let us put our faith and trust in Jesus. Let us put our faith and trust in the one who will bring us right where God wants us to be. Yeah. Not where we want to be, but where God wants us to be. Hallelujah, that's right. Hallelujah. Things are changing and things are changing fast. Amen. But I'm so thankful that I worship and I believe in the one who never changes. The one who never changes. So I'm going to close with that because I do believe there's a bug fly called up there. That's okay. John the Baptist 
ate locusts. I ain't eating no bugs. <laughs> uh -uh. I draw the line. I know they say caves don't eat anything. That don't eat them. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not totally true. <laughs> no, no bugs. You put all the chocolate you want to, no grasshoppers with, grasshoppers with chocolate. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'll tell you what I do like, though. That chocolate my sister brings me all the time. Sister and Jesus. <laughs> but no, no bugs. No bugs. But you know, we might not be able to do everything we thought we could do this coming year. But when we put our trust in Jesus, we're going to see things flowing out of us like an artesian well. It's going to be flowing. And what we thought was so important yesterday, we'll find out has no meaning today. Because things have changed. This pure water that's flowing through an artesian well is cold. And it will change you. And this is what I'm saying. Allow the Lord to lead you. And He will lead you right where you need to be. To be able to do the things you need to do. Amen? So I'll say amen. And may God bless you. May God bless you beyond measure. So right now we're going to have a time of invitation. I'm going to turn this thing off. You know, we got a lot of sick people. I'm going to ask you all to stand, please.